My name is Porter Nilsson with Random R Tech, and today I'm going to be answering the question, what software can you use to make quality 3D art? So these are my personal preferences. You're going to find a wide range of different software that you can use, but this is what I've found over the last uh, 10 to 11 years works the best for me. So the short list is as follows. For 3D modeling, texture prep, rigging, and animation, I use Blender. For photo texture, uh, photo and texture editing, I use GIMP or Photoshop. For texturing my actual models, I use Substance Painter. For sculpting, I use ZBrush. For baking um, from high poly to low poly information, I use Handplane 3D. And then some of the more optional software that you don't have to have, but it's kind of just, um, it makes it a little bit nicer. I use Substance Designer for texture creation. I use Topogun for retopology of high, uh, high polygon models. And I use Marmoset 3 for presentation and rendering. And so that is a short version. If you just stop the video now and take my word for it, that is actually a pretty good list right there. But I do want to go into detail about why I use the software that I use. So first thing first, you're going to need a 3D modeling software. There's a lot of different software out there that you can use. And it all has its pros and cons. But I personally use Blender 3D. Um, the first reason being it's free. It's 100% free and some 3D software can cost you an arm and a leg, almost more than anything else put together. And so I use it for 3D modeling. I have found that I've been able to make butterflies, dump trucks, guns, swords, you name it, I can 3D model inside of Blender. It isn't the strongest at sculpting and so it can do that, but it's not the best at it. I also use Blender for unwrapping models and getting them ready for texturing. It has quite a comprehensive tool set in this and I find it quite easy to do this. Um, I can usually unwrap a model within a few seconds or minutes. I use it for rigging and animating my models. And again, this is a very strong point in Blender in my opinion. I've never been left feeling like I wanted more out of it. It just feels like it, it does what it's supposed to do and I can get the animations I want. I use Blender for exporting to 3D game engines like Unity or Unreal. And it used to be pretty poor at this. Um, the orientation would always export out kind of strange. But Blender is open source, so year in, year out, it gets better and better. And the, cor the current tools are quite good in my opinion. You can use it for baking, but it's not the best. Uh, you can use it for texturing, but again, it's that's not the strong so suit. Same with sculpting. It's, it's kind of said of Blender that it's the jack of all trades. It really can do quite a bit, but in being the jack of all trades, it's kind of the master of none. I think it is ph phenomenal for 3D modeling and for UV prep and for animation, but again, baking and sculpting and texturing, it is, it's not very good. So what are some of the pros and some of the cons? So pros, first, free, as in free, 100% free. It's open source, um, and so it, it keeps getting better year in, year out. When I started using it compared to now, it is a completely different software. Um, so it's, that's the second reason. It's always getting better. I, I've used it for 10 plus years, and it is amazing what it can do. Um, it, it's, it's, it's the artist and not so much the tool set at times of what the limitations to Blender is. So you can see some amazing work and you can also see some horrible work depending on, on who's using it. The third reason, um, a third pro, a lot of good free online tutorials. Um, some of the other 3D software doesn't have this as much and so you can learn Blender quite quickly. It's extremely fast as soon as you learn it. Uh, learning it might be a problem, but once you get into the workflow, you can create faster than almost any of the other programs, in my opinion. I've had several clients uh, actually say that they're surprised by how fast um, I, I can turn out a model. So what are some of the cons? Because I, I, I don't think Blender is perfect, and I, I do like it quite a bit, but I do see the warts as well. The first con seems to be the universal one, um, it's hard to navigate the UI. ZBrush probably is the only other software that has worse UI, in my opinion. It is getting better, but it is slow um, at getting better, and it it's really is a stumbling block for a lot of people right from the get-go. 
tried to teach my cousin Blender and he just bounced right off of it because of the UI. The second uh, con is it's not viewed as professional by all your clients. So some clients do require that you know 3D Max or, or Maya or something equivalent, but if you say, I'm good at Blender, they kind of shun you. Um, I have found some clients who don't ask, uh, just assume that I'm not using Blender because everything works just the same. And so there's not really that big of a hassle. And it is getting more and more accepted, but again, there is there is still that stigma. And the third con that I've found is it doesn't really play um, perfectly with other 3D software. .fbx formats, importing, exporting. Exporting is pretty good, but importing it has a few bugs. It is getting better, but cross-collaborating with other software, um, other 3D software is hard. I can import .objs. I can, I can export those just fine. But if someone has a model that they rigged and animated in um, 3 Max or, or any other software, I can't really import it into Blender very easily. And so that is a big con. But again, the free price tag more than makes up for it in my opinion. Next up, you're going to need a 2D image editing software. I personally use Photoshop because I use it for other things, but I would suggest that starting off use GIMP. It's free, it can do almost everything Photoshop can do, and until you know what it can't do, chances are you don't need Photoshop. Um, GIMP's downside is its user interface is also kind of clunky. That seems to be the common thread with free software. So why do you need image editing software? Well first, you use it to edit texture maps, color adjustments, things of that nature. Second, you use it to create seamless textures. Uh, third, I use it to create alphas for texture painting and for sculpting. And the fourth reason that I have it is just various odd jobs. If you're making video game art, you need to make presentation. You can use uh, this to kind of help make your presentation just that much more polished. And so this is more or less what I use it for. You might find other odd jobs such as inverting the RGB on a normal map or something along those lines. So it does have its useful place, but again, I would just suggest using something free like GIMP. That way um, you don't have to, you, you can save your money for other more powerful software. The next bit of software that I use is a basically texture painting software. There's a lot of different ones. And I've actually tried quite a few. I've tried Quixel, I've tried Mari, and personally speaking, I think Substance Painter is head and shoulders above both of those. I, it's just easier for me to wrap my head around. It seems extremely powerful. They're updating frequently. Quixel wasn't bad, but you have to have Photoshop, and it is a little bit slower. Mari, um, I didn't have the professional version, which is thousands of dollars, but it just seemed really slow compared to Substance Painter. I can go into Substance Painter and within a matter of minutes to you know an hour, I can have extremely good textures just like that. So what does it do? It is a physically based rendering um, texture painter. So PBR is what they call it. So everything that you, you, you the textures that you paint will have a metallic, a roughness, um, an albedo, and a height or normal map painted onto it. So when brought into other software, it will be able to have all those textures and it looks extremely realistic. Um, it simulates painting with physics, which the other ones I haven't seen done. So it's really interesting. Like you can have oil drip down or paint drip down off the model using physics or use wind to basically paint dust on top of this. I don't use that very frequently, but it is a cool kind of a gimmick that the other ones don't have. It has a variety of built-in textures that are extremely versatile. And it also has... Um, different filters or generators that take different maps and can give you edge wear and paint chips and scratches and all these other things. It basically takes texture painting and makes it intuitive and quick and fun. One of my favorite parts about it is you can mo you can paint multiple maps at the same time. Um, Mari, I basically had to do, and I, I didn't use Mari that much, so don't take my word for it, but it seemed like I, I couldn't do uh, roughness and specular and an albedo and normal at the same time, whereas Substance Painter you can. Uh, Substance Painter can also bake. 
it's not the best baking, but it's it's relatively good. So if you if you use it just for that too, um, well, you wouldn't use it just for that. It's such a great texture painting thing, but it can bake. So the pros, it's inexpensive. I think last I checked, it's between a hundred to one hundred fifty dollars for an indie license. It's powerful. It's quick. It's easy to use, but even more importantly, it's easy to learn. Uh, some of the cons, it can be buggy at times. It's not 100% stable, and so as you're, as you're texturing, it can just stop mid-texturing and just dump everything. So you do have to save quite frequently. Um, and some of the masking options are less than desirable. They are working on that. It's getting better, but that is one of the weaknesses that it does have. So again, I would suggest using Substance Painter, and it is extremely, extremely useful software. Next, you're going to need some sort of sculpting software. There are a lot of options, some more expensive than others and some cheaper than others, but I personally use ZBrush. It is one of the more expensive softwares, but it is head and shoulders better than anything else I've ever seen. It does almost everything I want, and whenever there is a feature that I am kind of desiring that they have, within a year to two years, they keep updating it and a feature that I have been wanting usually comes out or a better feature that I didn't even know that I want comes out. It is expensive. It's, it's very expensive. They do have basically a ZBrush, ZBrush Essentials, which is only $150. And you can use that for quite a while until you get to a point that you actually need more. I have the full version and I've never regretted buying it. It is, I use it almost daily. So what can it do? It can sculpt, and it is awesome at this. It feels it feels like traditional sculpting mixed with the convenience of digital. It can texture. It's okay at this. I, I used to use this a lot more until Substance Painter came out, um, but I don't use this very frequently. It can unwrap. It can create texture maps. Um, you can do 3D modeling, but again, just purely for sculpting, it is amazing and I, it, it's an essential part of my workflow. So the pros, it is powerful, like very, very, very powerful. This software is used in the movie industry. This is used in professional game industries. This is the software of choice by almost everybody. It is flexible. There, if you have a task you want to do, there's honestly 50 different ways to do that same task within ZBrush. It is, it is flexible and you can basically custom, customize it to your workflow. It's always innovating. For commercial software, it outpaces anything else I've ever seen. I bought this how long ago? Maybe four or five years ago. And I've never had to pay for an update. And I'm getting massive updates. They came out with something called DynaMesh, which... I would have paid a, a, an extra $700 just for this one feature, but I got it for free. Um, I don't know if this is going to continue forever. It has for five years. Maybe the you know next upgrade, it might cancel, but it is going strong. And every, every year, I just get more and more features. The ones coming out this year look amazing. And it's just so interesting where it's these features that I never even knew that I wanted. But as soon as you see them, you start to think about how your workflow is going to just increase that much faster. Um, the cons. It's expensive. It's expensive. Um, again, there's some things that you can do to kind of work around that. You can get the cheaper version and then you can upgrade at a later time. Yeah, that'll sink 50 extra dollars because it's 150 for the cheap version and then you get like minus $100 on the upgrade or something like that. So it's, it's not necessarily saving as much money as if you just buy it outright. The UI is horrendous, but the software more than makes up for it. And so you don't even care. Everyone like who sees the, the UI after a couple months, they're used to it and they forgot how just bad it was at the start. And that's it. Like there are no other cons to this software. It is amazing. And I strongly encourage you if, if, if you're looking at other software, consider ZBrush. It is super powerful. Now the final bit of software you're going to need is some sort of baking software. Now what baking does is it takes your high polygon models and it banks all the information down to low polygon models. So it still looks extremely good. So that's where you get your normal maps, your ambient occlusion maps, your um, edges and everything like that. And so there's a lot of options and they're actually all pretty good. You can use Substance Painter, you can use Blender. 
Um, I personally actually use Marmoset 3, which is kind of funny because Marmoset is originally designed for presentation. But if I was to suggest something to you, I would suggest um, Handplane 3D. It's, it's powerful. Its UI is, again, a little clunky. It is free, though. And so it is one of the most powerful things, and it's free. And so I would strongly encourage you to get that. Um, I'll, I'll make some videos of how I use Marmoset 3 to bake. And again, that's just per personal preference. I've used a lot of different things, and I just kind of like the workflow that goes around that. But I've used Substance Designer. I've used I've used um, Handplane, and I've actually like it quite a bit. So you also need that. Now these final three softwares purely optional. Everything I've gotten up to this point is, in my opinion, a foundation. You I. I can't work without ZBrush, I can't work without Substance Painter, I can't work without Blender or, or GIMP or um, Handplane 3D. But the following are just kind of ease of, ease of use. If you have these, it's going to make your life easier, but you don't have to. I have, I use TopoGun 2, I almost said 2D, TopoGun 2 for retopology of high polygon meshes. You can use ZBrush, you can use a couple other things, you can use Blender, it's not very good, but you can use Blender. Um, but TopoGun 2 cost me about $100, I think, and it's extremely fast. It also has a baking engine that I use for quite a while, which is quite powerful. I like Substance Designer. Not to be confused with Substance Painter, Substance Designer is a texture creation software. It can also bake, and its baking is quite powerful and good, too. So if you don't want to use Handplane 3D, um, there's this option. But I use this to create seamless textures as well, photorealistic seamless textures, and it plays very nicely with Substance Painter. Um, because it's by Algorithmic, which is the same company that makes Substance Painter. And finally, I use Marmoset 3. I use this for presentations, for portfolio building, but ironically, I actually use it the most for baking. Its baker is just so easy for me, and I just love it. So I will make a video later about that, and it's kind of interesting how powerful that is. And so those those software, I would encourage you maybe eventually, if if, if you feel like you're, you're getting the hang of this, uh, to buy, but it is optional. Um, it's, it's just kind of an ease, ease of life sort of thing. And so that's it. That's the software that I use. I have been doing this for about 10 to 11 years, um, off and on. And I've gotten to a point that I really don't need that much more software. I keep on trying other things. I've tried, I've tried Nald, K-N-A-L-D, and that's pretty good. I've tried a variety of other texturing um, software. Not so much 3D, 3D software because of how expensive it is. I've tried some sculpting in Blender. Don't like that very much. But I would encourage you, as, as you're trying to get into this, maybe start with the free things. Build off of that. And if you find that you're doing well, then start to, to fill in the gaps with the supplement uh, with the other software. ZBrush is amazing. Like, I just cannot talk uh, high enough about that. ZBrush is my go-to 3D software. Um, it's fun, like whenever I'm stressed out, I just pull that out and I just start doodling. So I hope this helped. And again, this is all subjective. If you disagree with anything, well, you are well within your your, your right to do so. Um, I, I know several people who disagree with many points. and I know several people who would agree with me on many points. It's a preference thing. And so if you like my workflow as you see some more of my videos, then this is what I use. All right. Thanks. Bye.